We got a guy that met, met you last year that wants to talk to you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who's that? He's down there. Down there. there you know, there's 10,000 right people. Awesome. Okay. Yep. His name is... Uh, oh, he looks familiar. I don't yeah, remember his yeah, name, but... Oh, yeah. Bad, I just talked to him about 20 seconds ago. Okay, great, great. Thanks, brother. Why you dark at the door of a church? And that's why we're compelled to love our neighbors. Hey, <laughs> how are you? I'm doing great. It's good to see you. Same here, neighbors. same here. How you been? I've been okay. Please you know? remember, it's very you think, you think much about that conversation we had last year? I thought about it, but I just kind of assume everyone forgive me. But I guess that's wrong. No. I mean, she remembered me. Yeah. That's your dad, right? Oh, yeah. That's okay. Dad, yeah. yeah, dad remembered Did, me. Didn't our conversation start with you being an agnostic, or at least thinking you were? Well, yeah. Right. I mean, uh, you still you still walking that way today, a year later? Well, uh, yeah. Wow. You know you know what that means? What's that? You got a card on you? Like what kind of card? Business card. Uh, uh, BBC. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. That means for the last year, God showered mercy and grace on you that you didn't deserve. God is rich in mercy. Please hear. Hear the love. That means God has given you another year of life, even though you live in rebellion against Him. Mm. I can't argue against that. But how long do you think He's going to do that? Jesus. Not very long if I keep this up. So do you remember the, you remember the message I shared with you last year? Uh, a little bit. So sorry. I'm going because but yesterday was bad, but it was really God nice God talking to you. God put out the rat and the God and Jesus shed his blood for you and I. Uh, <laughs> I had a oh, He died so that you could live. Some nice kids, you know? Oh yeah, very nice. Very nice kids. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not much older, but you know, whatever. It's a year. <laughs> right, we're all a year older. And if you would yeah. repent, I mean, I'm like, like 17, 18, something like that. Yeah, 17, 18, 19, all of the groups all within that age range. Yeah. yeah. I'm almost old man. I'm almost 30 in three years. Hey, everyone. Woo. And I'm really starting to feel it. Feel what? Feel your age? Yeah. At least in the mind. It's like, you know, sure, I'm the same person. But you know, well, I mean, obviously you went through this. But, you know, you went through things and you start to see things differently. You know? Yeah. So what do you see different from last year? Yes. Well, uh, yes. Yes. You know, I'm yes. lucky to be alive, to be honest with you. You know, a couple close calls, but, you know, I'm still here. What happened? <laughs> well, you know, um, there's a lot of depression and stuff like that. Money troubles. You know, money, money is very important. I learned that lesson this year. Extremely important. Is it too important? What do you mean? Well, the Word of God says that money is the root of all kinds of evil. I don't remember that. Thank you, folks. Not that the money itself is evil, but the, attention but, that the, but the temptation that comes along with not only having it, but not having it. Yeah, but it's right, because because oh, right, because people will do. Some people will do just about anything to get it. And some just about anything to keep it. Right. People will sell their souls for it. They'll sell their integrity for it. Right? They'll, they'll sacrifice relationships for it. Yeah, marriage. Even their lives. How are you gonna spend money if you don't have a life? You gotta be alive. But why is it so important now? Well, I mean, without it, you know, I won't be able to pay bills and, you know, the whole world will frown upon me. I mean, really frown upon me. Like, you know, like I'm a leopard or something. So you gotta look presentable, at least to some degree. You know, even if you don't really have that much money. But that still doesn't solve the problem of once you leave this world, my friend. It still it doesn't solve that problem, man. You're not going to take any of that money with you. That's true. Have you ever seen a, you know what a hearse is, right? Yeah. You ever seen a hearse pulling a U-Haul trailer? No. Get the guy burying all of his stuff with him? He can. He can. Right? He leaves it behind. He's dust. He's in the ground. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how many zeros are in his bank account now, right? And the same will be true with you and me. When we die and stand before God, it's not going to matter how many or how few zeros we had in our bank account. Well, yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, there have been people that try. You know, emperors and pharaohs. They have whole tombs full of like treasure. Sorry, brother. No.
No, no, no. There you go. Yeah, but their their decaying bodies are still there. All their jewels are still there. And they're in museums or they're in someone's living room or they're in someone's vault. It doesn't belong to them anymore. True. Right? Or grave robbers. Or grave robbers. Right. So when all of those rich pharaohs, when all of those rich pharaohs died and they stood before God to be judged. And they weren't judged by how much money they had. They were judged by God's law that he had written on their heart. Same law he wrote on our hearts. Same conversation we had a year ago. See, that doesn't change. Truth, truth doesn't change. People change. Circumstances change. Truth does not change. What has always been true will always be true. And God is going to call you to account, my dear friend. What's your first name again? Vernon. Vernon. Like the milk. Tony. Nice to meet you, Tony. Again. <laughs> I'm loving a mustache. Somewhere in... I think I said that last year, too. Oh, yeah. It, 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 it's with me wherever I go. <laughs> uh, sometimes I wish I could grow, like, super cool, like, mustaches. It just, this is all I get, you know? I really want, like, a curly mustache. Uh, some dreams just don't come true sometimes. Ah, well. But, eh, it's not that big of a deal. I can always buy one. So are you working? Huh? Oh, yeah. I'm working with the federal government. What are you doing? Help desk. So, um, like, mainly what, uh, what branch of, of service or what department? Social Security Administration. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we mainly work with, like, the people that actually work with the cases. So, like, we, you know, it's, uh, do tech support for the people who work with the people who need help, if, if that makes any sense. It does. So, we're the tech support for the administrators. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, this is my second week. Um, they, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Brand new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I managed to get over that, you know. That was rough. Real rough. But, you know, I'm, I'm glad I got some sort of employment. Most of the people I work with are pretty chill. So, like, everyone's pretty chill. I mean, they have their moments, but who doesn't? So. But, Vernon, what's going to happen if you die tonight, my friend? I'm so glad to see you because that means God hasn't called you to account yet. I'm, I am. I'm sincerely glad to see you. I'm glad to see you alive. I'm glad to see you well because that means there's still hope for you. That means God hasn't, that means God hasn't judged you yet. So I, I'm, I'm glad. No, I'm just glad. But, but I don't know if I'm going to see you next year. I, I'll be here. But I don't, well, Lord willing, yeah, I mean, I, I may not make it home to where I'm staying tonight, right? Sure. Tomorrow's not promised. Our next breath isn't promised. Oh yeah, that's true. So you're 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 playing with someone else's money. Mm. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about you know natalism, which is basically you know life and stuff like that. And I always pondered, you know, why was I born? You know. I know why. Why is that? To glorify God. That's what I saw that coming. But, the th but here's the thing, Vernon. You were born to glorify God, and He's going to receive glory by either saving you and loving you as one of His beloved children or by condemning you to hell for all eternity for your sin. Either way, He's going to be glorified in you. My hope for you, my friend, is that He's glorified in you by saving you and giving you eternal life, not by condemning you for your sin. What's not possible? I was thinking, you know, you know, if guys answer prayers, right? I was thinking maybe. Well, he doesn't answer them all, and he doesn't answer the prayers of everyone who asks. No, no, no. It's not anything crazy like, oh, I want a million dollars. Oh, that's right. You know, I wanted to like not be born, because you know, it's like I'm stuck in this situation where you know it's chaos everywhere, and I'm so it's so easy to fall into hell. It's just like, man, I don't want to be in this game. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. You know there was what? a couple of fun here and there. But there, was, uh, there was another man, there was another man who thought the same way about, uh, I don't know, about 4,000 years ago. His name was Job. Job, all the things you're looking for, money, security, he had it all. Oh, yeah. He, he had it all. God, God took all of it away in a moment. And even then, he didn't curse God. And then God took, then God took his health. 
told Satan, you can, you can touch his body, but you just can't kill him. And even Job's wife came to, came to him and said, curse God and die. But Job would not do that. But there came a point where Job started to question God as to why he was even born. And, and God's response was to appear to him in a tornado and speak to him and basically say, over three chapters of the Bible, who do you think you are, Job, to question me? The Bible says, the Bible says that uh, the earth is God's footstool. You and me, we're, we're specks of dust on that earth. We're specks of dust under the foot of God. But yet we presume to ask him things like, why was I even born? I was asking him, I was asking to him today, why are these things happening to me? Why, why am I going through this right now? And, and my pastor basically had to slap me upside the head over the phone and, and, and tell me how wrong my thinking is and, and, how, and how hypocritical it is to the faith that I say I have in Christ. But you're doing the same thing, Vernon. God's given you life and breath and everything you have. You have a job for the last two weeks because God decreed it so before the foundation of the world. You're alive walking around today because God decreed it before the foundation of the world. You were formed in your mother's womb and God numbered your days before there was even one of them and God decreed that before the foundation of the world. And you say to God, I wonder if I could pray that I would never be born. Well, I mean, everything I do that doesn't please him, offends him, so I figured, look. Then if repent. I, if I was never born, then you repent. You can like do some time manipulation, I was never born. Then repent. Turn to Christ. Turn to Christ, man. You know, truth be told, man, this is one of the reasons why, you know, I'm not deciding to have kids. I mean, why would I bring them into this? You know, it's like, okay, you know, if I take this... Vernon, hmm? let, me, let me ask you something as a friend. What's up? Why do you hate God? Hate Vernon, God. why do you... That's a question I want you to ask yourself, because you do hate God. Vernon, two years in a row now, a man from Iowa runs into you at Artscape pleading with you to worship the God you know and you refuse and you deflect well, I'm not going to bring any kids in the world or why was I born or you know I'm, uh, I want money money's become very very important you're dodging everything but what really matters your soul for Vernon what will it profit you if you gain the whole world and forfeit your soul Vernon It'll profit you, it'll profit you nothing, my friend. It'll profit you nothing. Turn to Christ and live while God's giving you time. God ordained that you and I would see each other again this year. It's not coincidence, it's not chance, it's not dumb luck. It's the providence of God. It's the goodness and grace of God in both of our lives that he would allow us to see each other again so that we could talk. I'm sorry for laughing, it's just that this is such a deja vu thing, both with, you know, with you specifically, but also a couple years ago, um, you know, I was uh, going downtown. I, I might have told you this, but I'll tell you again. Um, I was going downtown, I was gonna get a video game, and I think it was like Super Mario or something. I always like those type of games. And anywho, uh, I was walking down towards the uh, gallery, right? And uh, there was a guy who was kind of like preaching or what have you. And it was like, hey, everybody, hey, listen, you know, I am uh, perfect. Um, I have something important to tell you. And he was like, Jesus Christ is Lord. And I just kind of stopped and I just kind of looked at the guy. His entire, like, you know, street sermon thing. And then from there, you know, I talked to him. I, you know, I'll bring some water. Well, I got to show off for you something too, huh? I mean, this is the second time we met. You want some water or something? No, nah, I'm fine. I want you to have living water, and that is Christ. You'll never thirst again. You'll have assurance of the forgiveness of your sins. You'll have the assurance of eternal life. 
you'll be reconciled to the God. You'll, pardon me one second. Officers, God bless you. Thank you for your service. God bless you. Thank you for your service. You'll have the assurance of eternal life. You'll be reconciled to the God you've spent your entire life offending. You've been an enemy of God for almost 30 years. How much longer do you think he's gonna put up with you? And I say that to you because I love you, man. I don't, I don't want you to perish in your sin. I don't want you to face the wrath of God. Can uh, I really be saved though? I mean, yeah. you know what, we did this. You know how I know? What's that? He saved me. That's how I know you could be saved. I don't know if you will, but I know you can. Because the God who saved me is more than able to save you. The God who took a filthy, wretched sinner like me and gave me a new heart with new desires and who forgave my sins and gave me the assurance of eternal life, not because I'm good, but because he's good, can do that for you too. But God resists the proud, Vernon. He, he's opposed to the proud. He only gives his grace to the humble. God has showered mercy on you for a year. He hasn't given you what you've deserved for a year since our last conversation. See, the message of the gospel, the Bible says, is either an aroma of life unto life to those who are being saved or an aroma of death unto death to those who are perishing. And unless you repent, Vernon, you will perish. Oh, sorry. Pardon us, pardon us. Turn to Christ and live, man. The message doesn't change. The day changes. I'm a little heavier. You look about the same. <laughs> I got you fooled. How's it going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it. <laughs> oh, yeah, we go to like a little well. But truth doesn't change, Vernon. And the truth is, right now you're an enemy of God, and your only hope is through faith in Jesus Christ. Turn to Christ and live, my friend. Turn to Christ and live. The message doesn't change. Nor does the outcome if you repent and believe. All of God's promises are yes and amen. Word of God says if, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's a promise. It's a promise. Huh? I don't know, it's just like, you gotta kind of rationalize it away, you know? That's what, you, that's what you've done for a year. You've rationalized it away. Which is totally irrational. Still wish I was never born. Too late. Here you are. Here you are. And I'm glad, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you were born, and I'm glad you're still alive. Thanks, I'm glad you're still alive too. Thank you. You know, you need more positive people. You know, I mean, I always thought, hey, you know. I'm just Did you ever check out this church like I asked? I didn't look it up. But then I, you know. Come on, man. Come on. Frankie. Uh, well. Yeah, it's in your hand now. The responsibility's not mine anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Just two years, two of everything. Is that like a fortunate number or something? So, how severe do you think God's wrath against you is going to be? With how, knowing how much truth you've heard multiple times, how many times God's grace has been extended to you, how many times the gospel has been preached to you, how severe punishment will that be word of God says for if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins but a terrible expectation of judgment and a fury of the fire which will consume the adversary and it goes on to say Vernon that you are literally trampling under your feet the blood of Jesus Christ no he's God he ain't a cool dude you're a cool dude, oh, thank you. but he's God. <laughs> I mean, you know, he's, he's God. I'm just like, hey, you know, I'm just a guy. Just, 
let me take out this whatever this is and you know I'll, I'll be like I never exist and he might but but you're not you're never gonna stop existing you're going to either spend eternity in heaven or eternity in hell you're not just going to poof turn into dust and go away <laughs> I love Peach Dugs. <clears throat> I mean, you know, those are cool. So, uh, so I know we're going to stop resisting. Uh, well, I don't know if you're never going to stop resisting. Did you say I'm never going to stop resisting? I mean, that's what you told me. Well, no, no, no. I'm, t I'm telling you that if you don't stop resisting. No, I was saying I'm going to stop existing. Oh, existing. No, sorry. no, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're never going to stop existing. Your soul will go on forever. In either a place called heaven or a place called hell. Real places, both of which God rules over. Right now, you're a slave to sin. You're a slave to your own desires. You're, you're a slave to your own righteousness. And it's condemning you. You want to be God, Vernon, and it's not working out. I'm sorry? I say, I will say, hmm, on one hand, see how all y'all remember me, you know, part of me is like, well, you know, I probably should give it a shot, but it's like, you know, on the other hand, I don't want to promise y'all again, and then I show up, I'm like, I don't know. You're not doing it for me. Oh, I, wow. I, I'm going, I'm going to heaven regardless of what you do, right. not, not because of what I do, but because of what God has done for me. But see, the two greatest commandments of God are to love God and to love people. And there's no greater way I can love you than to point you to Christ. There's no greater way I can love you as my neighbor than point you to Christ. Watch your back. So they're getting a little noisy here, so I'm gonna provide my friends with some backup. Good seeing you, Vernon. Very good seeing you, man. God bless you. Same to you, man. I hope I see you again. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. All right, man. Take care.